today I want to share with you my hack for building a strong and committed relationship with your students and how this will help you improve and retain your KPIs here at SkyEng. Many teachers worry and feel nervous when they are assigned a new student. No two students are exactly the same and this is not necessarily a bad thing. It's good. This means you as a teacher will always be challenged and your work will never ever be mundane. So let's discuss how you should conduct your first introduction with your new student. So step one, always, always, always make sure to read your student's profile. Most students complete their profile with information such as their hobbies, their goals, but how do we use this information to our advantage? It's actually quite simple. Example, if the student enjoys art, maybe research the latest trends in the art movement. Is your student into IT? What's happening in the IT world? what's a hot topic. A great resource is the Harvard Business Review or The Independent. Also make sure that you are familiar with the appropriate courses in the box that would possibly be suitable for your student. Step two, ask many, 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 many questions. Remember, your student should be the one to do the most talking. Keep your questions simple and related to the student's goals and hobbies. If your student maybe didn't complete their profile, here are a few of my go-to questions which I believe you will find very helpful. How long have you been studying English? How will English improve your life? What are your strengths and weaknesses when, in when using English? Do you watch, listen, or read anything in English on a regular basis? Maybe Netflix or YouTube videos? Listen to English music? What was your previous English lessons like? What did you enjoy about them? What did you dislike about them? Do you like informative videos such as TED Talks? Or do you prefer informative articles and reading? By asking these qualifying questions, you will give your student a very clear picture of what to expect and you will have a very clear understanding of what type of learning your student enjoys. You will know their history and also know what not to do. Don't do that. It's important to know what the student disliked in order to not repeat the same errors as their previous educator. Remember that knowledge is power. You underestimate my power. So make sure to use this opportunity to get as much information as you can. Step three, put together an action plan. Now that you have a lot of information on your student, you can now formulate an action plan together with your student. And by action plan, I mean discuss the course that would be appropriate for the student. I always give my student two to three options to choose from. I show him or her the course options which I think is appropriate. The student then chooses the course that is most appealing to him or her. From my experience, students enjoy to be part of the process. They like to feel included. So the last thing you want to do is choose a course the students have no real interest in. Keep in mind that not all the courses have to be on Vimbox. If the student prefers TED Talks or articles, then make use of them instead. Step four, showing care and understanding. Basically, towards the end of your introduction, I would suggest that you tell your student about how you conduct your classes. At least that's what I do. So get off your act, let's do some math, 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 math. It's a good idea to let your student know that although the classes are online, that you are still human and therefore students and teachers should be treated as such. I discuss the school's cancellation policy and inform the student of the different types of penalties the school charges. But you might think, Hannah, why on earth would you do that? Well, we are all human. Life happens, guys. Do you really want to be charging your student for a last minute cancellation due to a family emergency or illness? No, I, I don't think you want to do that. So this is basically your opportunity to remind your student that although there is a policy that you are understanding and caring and that you are a human being. I'm a human being! I have this rule with all my students. I won't charge my students for the lesson on a last minute cancellation because sometimes the unforeseeable happens, even with you as a teacher. So instead, we always reschedule. You need to cancel? Well, you're going to reschedule instead. This means your KPIs will not be affected and your student doesn't lose their lesson. It's basically a win-win situation for all parties involved. So remember, it's your schedule, 
your time and you control everything that is the beauty of working with Skyeye. Keep in mind that this doesn't mean your students have the opportunity to cancel frequently for just any known reason. There are limits to everything. The reason I have this personal policy with my students is because I want them to feel valued and cared for and not viewed as a cash cow. If you show your students understanding, they will be accommodating and understanding towards you as their teacher should you ever have an emergency or fall ill and need to cancel a lesson last minute. Like any type of relationship, it ends up being giving and taking. Very clever. Step five, having an open door policy. I make sure that my students are comfortable to inform me at any time when they are feeling bored with a course or its content. Boring. It's important that a student feels confident enough to tell you if a course is too easy or too hard or just plain boring. I usually make a joke and say, oh, you think you are bored? <laughs> I'm the one that has to be teaching the same material over and over again to multiple students. So I then just change the material right away and we find something more appealing. It is okay to change materials midway through a course. Variety is good. I usually make use of the news or article courses as they are short, they're interactive, and they can also be completed in one 50 minute lesson, some even in 30 minutes. So if a student is feeling bored, you can also inform them that you understand the section of the lesson might be a little boring, but here are the reasons why this section is important. You can also find alternative resources to teach that particular part of the lesson. So for example, if it's a grammar section, you can find interactive websites which allows the student to practice and integrate these rules much more easily. So at the end of the day, the conclusion is, guys, you are human. If you can demonstrate that you care, and that you understand the challenges that they will face while learning a language, I can almost guarantee you that you will have a strong and lasting relationship with your students. And I know this for a fact because I've been able to retain my long-standing students for over a year and a half, even after they've reached their goals. I can guarantee you that if you follow this method and get out of your comfort zone and be flexible and have this open door policy with your student that you will not go wrong. Happy teaching.